Hi all. In this session, I want to demonstrate how to insert a data into XML file using ASP.NET. Quite often, we may listen about XML, XML files. So not only in ASP.NET, any of an web application development tool or any of the service oriented tool is uh, you know, going to present the data in the form of an XML. Let me, you know, introduce an XML file in a more elaborative manner and then we'll see the structure of an XML file and then how and data will be inserted using an XML file. What was the basic features and advanced features which are related to an XML file will elaborate in this session. So my first part is I would like to introduce an XML, you know, basic introductions related to an XML. As you know, acronym for an XML is an extensible markup language. So it's a markup language similar to an XML, but there is a vast differences between XML and HTML. So the basic usage of an XML is it provides a standard way of communication in between two incompatible systems. See, Generally, in web services, WCF, Web API, you may work in an earlier sessions or you may heard something about web services, WCF and Web API. What all this will return? This returns the data. The data will be either in the form of an XML or JSON format or Atom format. This is also one of the uh, different format of presenting the data. But why a data is going to be provided in the form of an XML means an XML can understandable by any technology. Java program can understand XML file. .NET program can understand XML file. PHP program can understand XML file. Ruby on Rails program can understand XML file. There's a reason two incompatible systems can understand an XML file which results and communication makes more easier in between the two incompatible systems. Say for example, if I want to communicate with an another person, medium between me and other person is a language. Would it be English, would it be Hindi or anything? But the language is a you know, communicative part or language is a medium in between me and other person. So here also, so in order to maintain a communication in between one system, one technological system to another technology system, they required a medium. That medium is going to be facilitated with the help of an XML because both technical systems can understand XML. That's the reason. So this is a core idea and core concept of an XML. So that's what my second point. It provides a standard way of communication in between two incompatible systems java and .NET. these are the two incompatible systems because two uh, different programming languages are different technologies as well as java and php two incompatible systems java and java compatible systems because both are same dot net dot net compatible systems so it offers a standard way of communication in between two incompatible systems so xml is used to transfer the data rather than displaying of data html is used to display of data but xml is used to transportation of the data so wherever you want a data you can transport the data with the help of an xml file so and as well as xml contains a tags every tag must have a closing tag these tags are not predefined we must define our own tags every tag has a closing See, generally in HTML, all tags are predefined. Unlike in HTML, here in XML, all tags are in a user defined tags. We have to define our own tag and we have to close the tag. Whatever the tag that we created, no, the tag we have to close. So, which is mandatory. So, XML tags are self descriptive. As per the user requirement, we have to describe or we have to provide a description related to an XML tag. So, and as well as every XML tag is extended with a dot XML extension so that uh, it will be available with the dot XML as an extension for every file. So, and as well as you may see in any of the web based applications, we may saw dot XML files. So, you know, when you host a web application, 
if you want to make that application more popular then definitely we have to include sitemap.xml file because all search engines will fetch us or will try to figure out the sitemap.xml file from that particular web based application like search engines like google yahoo bing bindu where many search engines are available in the market right all search engines will try to find out the sitemap file related to a particular website because sitemap file briefs about the website means sitemap file typically provides an information related to your website how many pages you have so say for example home under home how many pages under about us how many pages under services how many pages it provides an entire description related to that so that file typically ranks our page on top so there's a reason whenever we are trying to develop a website we are trying to definitely or seo experts or some any of the you know marketing experts suggest us to add an xml related files so xml have a such a powerful and a potential visibility and usability in our, in our real time implementation so i would like to introduce the basic structure of our xml file see xml file has basically xml file starts with their version so x uh, and as well as it has an encoding types things that also it has to provided like utf 8 utf 16 utf 32 and every xml file has a root element and that root element every root element has a closing of root element and the parent element multiple number of parents will be available multiple number of childs will be available so this is a structure of an xml file so this is a grand you know a basic version of xml encoding format standalone as means uh, we can update this file oftenly wherever we want so here i want to you know create i generated a xml file this my xml file name is employee list this is nothing but my root element this is you know parent and this parent has some attributes name qualification designation of the attributes related to this likewise you can add n number of parents and if you want to add childs also you can add irrespective of attributes so here i would like to demonstrate you a practical example related to an, this xml file how we are going to use and all these sessions you can see in my practical you know implementation so steps to work with an xml file so generally here i want to provide you a steps to work with an xml file so open your visual studio click on new project click on select empty website so i don't want any other templates if you go with a normal website there you have a lot of js files lot of content related or css files all those things will be there it makes something clumsy for you people so for us so that's the reason i don't want to go with a normal website i just go with an empty website and i would like to name that application as xml demo and click ok go to solution explorer right click on the project click on add new folder named it as a files i want to take a files i want to store my xml files in a folder so it's a better structure structured oriented format that we have to take or that you have to place all your files in certain folders so my folder here is i named it as an files now design the form with the following controls right click on the project click on add new item select web form name it has insert template just you can take any of the web form page so follow all these steps steps my in my practical implementation i'm opening my visual studio I click on file new website So I named it as ASP.NET XML demo. Just click on OK. Selected empty website. So go to Solution Explorer. Create a new folder. 
click on add new folder so i named it as xml files i want to accommodate all my xml files in a certain folder there's a reason where i use this one so in order to demonstrate this example i want a form i would like to create a form add new item i would like to choose a web form so in this web form i named this file as insert data here i want to you know design my form i want to add two fields uh, three fields so considering a table i want to consider four rows and two columns i want to save a books information enter book name enter author name enter version i'd like to take a controls like text box for presenting a name of the book similarly author name similarly version this is a button we we'll change this text to submit btn we we'll change the id to btn submit for a proper coding standards we have to you know change our control names as per the standards so mine is a uh, book name is text box txt book name and other name txt other name this is txt version so in this way we design the form now let me show you how to you know save the data so for this i would like to implement the business logic in the button click of submit button so in order to work with an xml file we have to use a namespace namespace is using system.xml first i'm using that namespace using system.xml so in order to save my xml file so i want to consider a variable so i would like to consider my variable name as string xml path i initialized my variable so i want to save my xml file in this path xml files so in order to map that path in a server side technologies we have a class that is server it contains a method that is map map path so by using that we have to point to that xml file and we would like to you know save that information so here xml path equal to so this is my http server utility class server dot map path so use tilt operator because which refers to an root object so xml i think you can give the name what are the name that you provided here my name xml files okay so plus i would like to save my you know xml file name as books in four dot xml Books info dot xml. So now, 
this is the way that i want to provide my path of an xml now in order to work with an xml we have a parent class that parent class name is xml document xml document i declared this class so once after my declaration i would like to check whether my xml file path is existed or not okay if it is already been existed then i would like to insert my data or if it is not existed i have to create a new file this is my simple you know basic implementation so in order to check the path of an xml path of an any file we have to use an n space that is using system.io in order to work with an any files we have to use this namespace i am incorporating that namespace here using system.io basically i want to check whether whether my path is existed or not so if file dot exists of xml path okay if it is not been existed then i would like to create that xml file so if not existed first i am writing for if not existed if my file is not existed then i want to create my document i want to you know create the structure everything if it is already been created then i will insert my records i will keep append my records so for this perspective so first i have to you know in order to provide an xml structure so we already saw we have a certain point of declaration here xml version encoding all these things are there right so similarly provide your xml declaration so in order to provide your xml declaration we have a class called xml declaration class so xml declaration so create an object for this class that is declaration and we have a document right x doc dot create declaration this is a method create xml declaration so in this declaration you have to provide the version of your xml file so basically i want to deal in version called 1.0 and encoding mechanism that is utf 8 similarly so stand alone so yes this is a stand alone thing these three parameters we have to pass for the declaration method create xml declaration similarly so we all we already discussed that xml is a comprised of root parent attributes and child elements here i want to declare my root element in order to declare a root element in order to declare any element we have to use a class that is xml element so xml element so first of all i want to declare it as a root so for for better you know proper conventions i consider that variable you know that object name as a root doc dot create sorry x doc x doc dot create element so in this element i want to represent a books information so i would like to consider it as a books list this is my root and i want to present my parent so similarly we have to consider xml element parent equal to x doc dot create element so in this i have to provide whatever the name so you can provide book okay my child has a book so i want to provide uh, some attributes related to this book so those attributes in order to represent an attribute we can consider xml attribute space so name book name we want to consider it as a book name book name equal to so we have to add this attribute right doc dot 
xdoc dot create attribute create attribute so this is nothing but name similarly author is also there author author as an attribute similarly version version of this book Likewise, I declared all my attributes. For these attributes, we have to pass the values, right? So I want to, you know, pass my values. Book name is my attribute. It has a property called value. So what are the values that we pass in the text box? That value we are, you know, passing to this book name. So as well as author, for author also, author dot value equal to txt author name dot text so here uh, instead of author we have to provide book name this is book name right txt book name dot text similarly version version dot value equal to txt version dot text so in this way we will provide the values to our attributes itself now we have to append all this information to our xml document so first we have to append x dot append child of declaration part we have to append similarly xdoc dot declaration append dot child so here we have to pass a root similarly we have to pass parent similarly we have to pass attributes related to this parent so for this parent dot attributes dot add sorry append so we are appending attributes to our parent so in order to append this one we have a book name similarly we have an author as well as we have a version so now we are going to save our XML document. XML, sorry, xdoc dot save. So we are saving an, our XML document in a specified path. So we specified one path, right? XML path. So in this way, we are going to, you know, create our XML, we are going to pass our data to our XML file. So this is this implementation is required if you don't have an, any XML file. If you have an, any XML file, if your XML file is already existed, then we no need to declare all this declaration part like this XML declaration is not, not required. Of course, so we have to pass the data. That's it. Okay. So once after the loading of our XML information. So now what we have to do is I would like to, you know, implement my else part. So my else part is so I'm going to if it is already been existed, I'm going to load my XML file. So here X doc dot load of XML path. XML path. So now here I want to consider, you know, root element. So from this root, I would like to read my document related information. So what I'm trying to do is XML element. I would like to consider an XML element root equal to xdoc dot 
document element and then xml document again we have to create a document because we have to in, you know append the data to our main file so for this existing file document ex doc equal to new xml document ex doc dot load of xml path now we have to provide the information which are related to this so what i am trying to do is i will create you know my parent because already root is there so no need to add a root so i want to declare my parent and i want to pass attributes related to that parent itself so for this so xml element is required in order to create a parent right these things are required so just i am adding up to here so i am declaring my xml element so that is for the parent so instead of you know xml element is there and as well as so xml attribute is there xml um, three attributes for parent book name author version all these values are there so now we are passing these values so far you are clear now what we have to do is now we are going to append this information to the root itself our root is root dot append child so root of append child we are trying to pass our parent as an input now we have our document right x doc dot save of path so it's an xml path we consider a variable as xml path so in this way we are going to save the data so let me execute this one so just execute this application so i would like to provide wings of five a page abdul kalam version 1.3.1 so i click on submit it provides some information so attribute of wrong value of okay so i suppose pass y as a small thing so far apj abdul kalam 1.3.1 this document already has a document element node so let's understand this error this document already has a document element node so it is specifying that already document element is already there this document already has a document element node we have a root and as well as we have a parent so append child so we pass it as a declaration mm, append child okay so sorry here we have to correct it actually we have to pass our document to the root so we are going to pass our parent to our root element so that's the reason we have to use root dot append child okay here also we have to pass 
root to dot append child okay so here it was correct but there uh, i think it's a typo mistake so now we have to pass wings of fire as a book apj abdul kalam 1.3.1 just click on submit so your data got submitted we'll just put an alert message stating that uh, data got inserted or something open a folder in file explorer in xml files folder you will have books info in this books info so your data will be saved here itself okay now i want to you know extend this example by providing exceptional handling mechanisms so i put try catch blocks If it is successful, I would like to provide a message response dot write of script tag. So, if it went to the exception, something went wrong. Try after some time. Just I provided in my catch block. So, now I'd like to execute my so now my file was got created so once after my file was created so just i want to add my data so let me debug this one so now it will enter into the else block this is my block so in this i would like to pass another book name the magic of thinking Author of this book is David Strauss. So volume 3.8.1. I click on submit button. See already mm, XML file is there. So we are loading that file and we are passing an information and we got saved. So now data inserted successfully. Just you can check our XML file. So just refresh it and check once. Book name is there himself. Okay. I think uh, something we are not saving this information. Just check once. Yeah. We are not saving this because we have to add these attributes, right? So root element, uh, we did this. So once after this root element, we have to pass these values, right? parent dot attributes dot add append of so we have to add these attributes so those attributes are book name similarly author if you are not adding you will get a some empty xml file the one which we are looking so we got an xml node was created with empty attributes so now just execute this one so the magic of thinking david squawad's version is 3.8.1 data got inserted so now your xml file got updated check once so in this way we will save the data in an xml file so like every data will be appended as per the requirement now let me brief you an advantages which are related to an xml file so just think and imagine that if there is a data 
okay the data is not in larger part to deal or if the data is not so costly to effect to deal with the database place the data in xml file and just query the data with the help of our xpath queries so i would like to you know create a, one more uh, you know example implementation in my later video sessions so in that i would like to apply a xpath queries in an xml file okay and if you think that the data is not uh, you know data is an costest approach in order to interact with the database instead of that you can make use of an xml file to store the data whenever we are dealing with an larger enterprise based applications quite often interact with the database is an costliest approach because it is a more of performance hit so unless and until if it is in mandated to save the data in xml so don't use an X, uh, uh, sql unless and until if it is required to save the data in sql server um, then otherwise don't use sql server for temporary saving of the data for temporary saving of the data you have to deal with xml and you can save your data so that you will improve the performance of your application in a lots of way and even you can understand that sql server is a licensed based version software so which is a not a free but xml is a free just think that if it is not so useful then try to make use of your xml files and read the data and write the data in an xml file so i would like to publish a series in coming sessions related to an xml how effectively we will save the data how effectively we will retrieve the data and how to apply the xpath queries say here i would like to give one more you know information related to this xml file say for example so i am you know executing this uh, example one more time magic of thinking i have and david scores and my version is 3.8.1 if i want to save the same data okay if you click on submit would it be saved or not okay so if saved how to avoid the saving mechanisms say so just because so i just uh, clicked on this my data got inserted just go to this my file got uh, updated xml file got same record will be saved so i don't want to save a duplicate information how to avoid duplicate saving of an information in xml file this thing we will see in later video session okay i hope you enjoy with this video so please subscribe to our channel that is pnv technical hub in youtube and our presence is there in facebook also please like us share us and comment if you have any things just let us um, you know implement a, a stronger platform in a technical perspective please do share your comments so we will improve you know our implementation approaches in future okay if you have any questions please do share us we will respond you with a certain you know implementative examples thanks for watching this video have a good day